In this tutorial, we'll be covering how to use the appearance window inside Adobe Illustrator to make really customized type like this example on the left right here. But I'll of course tell you how to just basically use this to make your own custom arrangements of type, adding your own styles of effects so you can make things that look pretty much however you want to because it's an extremely flexible system. So you want a few different windows open just so you can create stuff a little bit easier. And the most important one when you click on window up the top here is appearance at the top. So make sure that is opened and that's right here on my screen, which will kind of keep locked to the side here. You're also going to want graphic styles opened for the very last part of the tutorial. So I'm going to go to window and then sort of near the middle here, there's graphic styles. So make sure that is also opened. But really, those are the only two main things that you're going to want to have opened. And also, it might be helpful to have window type and then character selected, which is on my right side of my screen right here. I'm circling with my mouse in case you want to adjust your type a little bit. And the font I'm using for this is called Langdon and it's a free font. And below the video, there'll be a description where I will link this font to download. If you don't see it, just click the show more button. So feel free to download that font before you get started here so that you can match what I'm doing exactly. Or better yet, you can use your own font, your own favorite font, or even apply it to symbol illustrations and silhouettes because it should all work for that. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard to bring up the type tool that also Looks like a T in your toolbar and just click it once on my screen and I'll type out the word solid so that it is much like this one off to the right here. I'm going to set it to 72 point for the font size, but it doesn't matter what font size you pick. What matters is that when you apply the effects, you scale them appropriately for the size of your particular typography or the illustration you're using, whatever the case may be, because the numbers I put in might be different than the numbers you put in, but that's totally cool. I'm going to change the font to Langdon by just going to the type character window right here and typing that out until it brings it up in search. So we have the word typed up right here here. So if I highlight my original example right here and I look at the appearance window, you can tell there's a bunch of different stuff applied to it. There's a warp bulge at the top that if I click on this eyeball icon, I can turn on and off that effect. So as you can see, the bulge effect basically squishes it in on the top on the bottom on a rounded radius, which gives it kind of a neat effect. So if I leave that off, this looks much more standardized and nice straight font. So there will be some stylistic changes like that that you can either apply or not apply or pick different effects altogether. And I'll go over all that, of course. The main fill right here in white is on its own little section called fill. Below that, we have a stroke applied, which is this 3D extrude stroke. And then below that stroke, there's actually another stroke in a different color, which creates this secondary shadow look at the very bottom here. If I zoom in a little bit closer, that's that secondary stroke. So the first thing I like to do when I'm making a type thing, and I'm going to use the appearance one to apply all the effects, is highlight over that object, so the type or the silhouette, using the selection tool. And then under the fill and stroke in the left toolbar right here, I'm actually going to hit this little none button just in the bottom right of it. It looks like a white box with a red line going through it diagonally. And make sure that it has no fill and no stroke. And it's important that you keep your thing selected. And I just like having no fill or stroke because I want to apply that all through your appearance window. You don't have to do this, but it's just like the cleanest way of going about and doing it. So in your appearance window at the bottom left, there is a box with a section missing in the middle that says add a new stroke. And just to the right of that, there's a box with a box in it called add a new fill. So in this case, I want to add a fill to this. So I'm going to click add a fill right here which will bring up the fill in the appearance window. You'll also note that it made a blank stroke. Don't worry about that. It doesn't really matter. And also keep in mind that the things on the top of your appearance window will overwrite the things below it. So your fill, you're probably always going to want that on the top. To change the color of the fill, you can just click the down arrow and select a color of your choice. You can also open up the swatch libraries menu in the bottom left hand corner and select a different swatch library from a huge selection of choices if you want to do that. But I just want white. That's pretty easy. So I'm going to click on white. Alternatively, you can hold down shift and click on this, which will bring up a different menu where you can adjust these sliders to get a custom color if that's something you want to do but I don't want to do that. I'm happy with white. So I'm just going to continue onward here. And by the way, always make sure your thing is selected when you're in the appearance window. Otherwise changes you make in the appearance window won't apply to your object. And that might leave you a little bit confused as to why this is not working. So next I'm going to add a stroke. So I'm going to hit this button in the lower left hand corner here of the appearance window that says add a new stroke. And I'm going to click and drag that below the fill. And that's really important that the stroke is below the fill so that it does not overwrite it. So so in my case, I'm going to make this a six point stroke and I'm just going to keep the color black like it is right now. You can change the color to be whatever color it is you want it to be from this menu 
or make a custom color if you want to do that. And also it might be helpful for you to open up your stroke window, which is under window and then stroke kind of near the bottom right here. So that's right here on my screen. And the thing that I like to do usually is I like to go to the cap and corner option and the two options on the left on cap and corner are for a straight edge corner or a straight edge cap. And basically the cap is the end point of a line and the corner is where two points meet. So I like to change those to round join on corner and round join on cap, but that's purely stylistic and it's up to you to decide if you wanna do that or not. If I move this back to the miter join corner, which is a hard edge, as you can see on this corner right here, they're 90 degree angles, where when I change that to something like round join, they become rounded. So that's just a total stylistic choice. And there's also one on the far right called bevel, which makes it a 45 degree cut, which gives it kind of a cool vintage look. That's a bit more almost like a stamped piece of metal or something like that, at least in my opinion. But I'm gonna keep this on round for both of these and just keep going forward with that because that's what I like as far as looks go. I'm also gonna go to my character window here and just make the tracking a little bit wider, which is the VA with a line left and right. Bigger numbers push out lighters more so they have a little bit more room to breathe. And now is where the really fun stuff happens. So I'm gonna select this once again so that my type is selected. And with the stroke selected in my appearance window, you can tell it's selected because it will highlight it a little bit brighter. So with this stroke selected, I wanna to go to this FX button right here. And from the FX button, I wanna to go to distort and transform and then transform. And that brings up the transform menu right here, which is where we're gonna make the changes. You can hit this preview button in the lower left-hand corner so you can see what you're doing in real time. And the main thing I'm gonna focus on here is the move, so horizontal and vertical. And I'm gonna make these really small, something like 0.1 by 0.1. So 0.1 point horizontally to the right and 0.1 vertically down. And then I'll just click off here. And what I wanna do is under copies, I wanna repeat this move effect a whole bunch of times to create a 3D effect, kinda of like what we have on the left side here. So I'm gonna change this to something like 25 copies and just click on one of these other things so we can see that apply. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. So now inside the stroke right here, we have this transform applied. And as you can see, if I zoom out a little bit and compare it to this on the left, it's not quite as deep, but I could go back in a transform by clicking this down arrow on stroke if you don't see it automatically. And then inside here, you can always click on the word that says transform, which will bring the menu back up. Hit that preview button again, change it to be something bigger like 35. And then as you can see, it's very easy to apply that and quickly make changes. I'm gonna zoom in closer here so we can see if this looks nice and smooth. If you make the number too small in the move, you'll get some really jaggy edges. So I'll just do that quickly so you can see what I'm talking about. So instead of 0.1 point by 0.1 point, I'll just do one by one and then hit preview so you can see what's happening. And in this case, since it's rounded, it actually looks like a bunch of rounded corners, whoops kind of freaking out a little bit. But if I change these to edges, you can see this very noticeable stepping pattern, which is basically each move being moved, or was it 35 times, I think. So because you don't wanna see that visual transition, when your type is selected here, and I'm just gonna make these round once again, make sure if you see that super jaggy edge, you just go back into that transform and make the move amount something smaller, like 0.1 by 0.1 or whatever the case might be. You might even have to do something like 0.05 or something really small like that to get the overall effect that you're trying to do. So now we're almost done with this actually. It's been pretty quick to get thus far. I'm gonna actually click and hold on this stroke and then drag it down to this little page icon right here is just to the right of the garbage can and that'll duplicate the stroke as well as the effect that we just created. So make sure that your word or object is still selected and click on the stroke that's on the bottom of the two strokes. You should have two now since you basically duplicated it by dragging it to that page icon right there. I'm gonna change the color to be something like a gray right here in this gray menu. I'm also gonna hit this down arrow to see the menu. If you wanna create a tonal color for the background, like right here I have this on a blue background. So if I look at this you can tell this looks a little bit blue instead of gray you can change the blend mode by going to the opacity button once this menu is open by clicking on that arrow right now it says opacity default but if you change it to something like multiply it'll make this tonal because it will show a little bit of the gray through treat it almost like a transparency but because the gray is the exact same size as this black stroke we can't see it at all so I'm gonna click on transform once again and this time under copies I'm gonna hit preview quick so we can see this in real time I'm gonna change it to something like 50 copies 
instead of 35. So now we can see that the background shadow right here extends past the black 3D extrude because it has more copies to go in there and do that. And once again, if you made this change and you didn't see anything change, it's probably because your object wasn't selected. So make sure it's selected and then do this again, which isn't always fun, but that's how it goes. And also under opacity, when you click that, if I change that back to normal, you can see that it turns to gray. So that's what the opacity is basically doing when you change the blend modes. Alternatively, you can change opacity from 100% to something like 40 or 30%, and you'll also get a tonal effect that looks a little bit different than if you used a multiply mode, but that is another option that you can use if that's something you wanna do. But I'm gonna shift this back over to multiply since that's how I think this looks the best. So now actually I'm gonna select this entire item because we're pretty much done here. The last thing is this kind of cool effect. Well, if you think it's cool, then it is cool. If you don't like it, then don't apply it. But you can go ahead and just highlight your entire item. And I'm gonna select type at the very top here because I actually want this effect to apply to the entire thing. So I'm gonna select type because hopefully that'll make the effect go to the very top. So with this selected here, I'm gonna go to effect and then warp and then bulge, which is near the top here. By default, bulge makes it bulge both up and down, but we want it to go in. So under bend, right now it says 50%, which is a positive number. I'm gonna drag this slider into the negatives until it gets to the point where I think it looks pretty close to my example over here. If you don't see it actually happening, make sure this little preview box right here is checked. In this case, no matter what, it seems to apply for me. But in case you don't see the effect in real time, just make sure that preview button is checked. But as you can tell, you can really do some crazy stuff in here as you kind of maneuver this around. But just find a thing that you think looks the best for you, the amount of overall bulge that you think looks the best for your word or your object. If it's an object, this might be a super tricky thing, but with type, it's usually fairly forgiving. But if you prefer it to go out, just make it a positive number and then it becomes taller. But bulge is not the only effect that you can use. There's some really cool ones. Arc is one of my personal favorites. So if you make the bend of an arc negative, it makes it arc downwards. And if you make it positive, it makes it arc upwards. So stuff like arched collegiate type and that kind of stuff, an arc is a really easy way to pull that effect off and also some other popular ones are things like arc upper or arc lower so arc lower just affects the bottom letters here so a popular form of arc lower is to give it a negative bend which just kind of curves them up here a little bit to make this nice arch shape which i think looks pretty darn good on a lot of different type pieces especially really strong looking type that tends to be the best there's things like flag that give it a top and bottom warping arc so go through and play with all these different warp effects because they're just a lot of fun to play around with and quite frankly can lead to some really awesome results when you find a really good match for your font and one of the best things about working like this is i can highlight this type as it is fully still live and I can change it to be something else so it's very easy to change this effect and apply different words or even make it bigger or smaller or use an entirely different font if you want to so I change this font right here so I'll just select a different font really quickly right here so you can see that it does change that instantly it works just fine you could apply this to all sorts of stuff and if you want to save this particular style that you've went and created go to your graphic styles window and once again that's under window and then graphic styles kind of near the middle a little above the middle on my particular screen right here and with your thing selected just use the selection tool which is a black arrow click and drag it into your graphic styles window right here and then drop and as you can see it made a little thing right here letting me know that I created a new graphic style so I'm just gonna draw something like let's say a star really quick so right here a beautiful star very well done and with that selected, I'm gonna click my new option that I just created in the graphic styles window, and it will go ahead and apply this effect to it. And then of course I can select this star right here, and let's say this warp flag looks kind of crazy on a star and I don't want that there. I can just click the eyeball in the appearance window to turn that off. Alternatively, I can click on the warp flag and hit this garbage can icon in the lower right to delete it. But as you can see, it's very easy to apply this effect to all sorts of stuff as soon as you save it to your graphic styles because it's just remembering all the settings that you applied and then applying them instantly to whatever object you tell it to apply it to. But that's it for this tutorial. I do hope you found it helpful because it's a really cool way to work and it's also super flexible and very powerful. This is just kind of a basic overview of things you can do, but really go in there and experiment with different settings, different styles of effects that you can apply. There's all sorts of cool stuff that you can do with the appearance window. And the best part is at any point in time, you can select your thing, go back to your appearance window, turn stuff on or off so that it just shows exactly what you want and nothing else. So you're never destroying the original work. You're just applying effects to it 
template, which is a completely non-destructive way to work and a very nice way to go through and add customizations without ever having to worry about overriding previous changes or getting to a point that you can't come back from. But that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please hit like and favorite. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep new content just like this coming for illustrators and designers. Thanks so much for watching.